and this enhances lipolysis. So as we say in Hindi, loha lohe ko karta hai. You're going to give fat from outside and use that to burn endogenous fat. And this induces the process of ketosis. Low carbohydrate level in the liver is a huge trigger for ketone body production. Now bear in mind, I just want to tell you we are very safe. In a normal diet, the ketone bodies are zero. When you go into diabetic ketoacidosis, those levels are more than 25. What we induce is just a trace level of ketosis, and if we were to measure the BHB levels, they would be in simply the safe range. And ketosis, hence, works in a very diagrammatic way by inducing this fatty acid level that travel to the liver, and you actually start removing fat from your organs. It's the best way to displace visceral fat. And keto adaptation will happen about one or two weeks into the process. So we typically ask our patients to at least do the first round of ketosis from anywhere from two to three weeks. And we'll talk about the practical aspects. Now, what does the data show you? Here is a study hot off the press. My friend Giovanna in Italy, who does this, uh, this is just from 2022, just last week. Very low uh, carbohydrate ketogenic diet, a real time safety study. So they looked at 106 patients. What's interesting is more number of women, about 94 women. You can see they are all obese. And they put them on a very low calorie as well as a very low carbohydrate, about an 800 calorie diet. And what do we see at the beginning and at the end of the phase one? So the anthropometrics, you can see dramatically and statistically significant weight, BMI, and waist circumference goes down. The blood glucose did not go down significantly. These are not diabetic patients. These are obese patients. But it was trending towards significance. Lipid parameters, I'm always asked about that. So you can see the total cholesterol levels go down. The HDL, LDL cholesterol levels also went down. HDL cholesterol remained the same, and triglyceride was not affected. I will show you other studies where the triglyceride levels drop down, and the HDL cholesterol also rises. Now, what about the metabolic syndrome? So this is taken from Dr. Wallach's study, who is also doing a lot of research in keto diets. What they did in the first study, they had a very active, very low calorie phase. Over here, what they do is what is more akin to what I'm doing in my practice. The patient comes in, you have a regular diet run-in, followed by a low carbohydrate period for two weeks, three weeks. Then you do a washout with regular diet. Then you again kind of subject them to a moderate carbohydrate diet, and then you will release them into a regular pattern of dieting. 16 obese patients were studied, and a picture speaks a thousand words. This is before. You can see the prevalence of metabolic syndrome, and what do you see? To the right of your panel, metabolic syndrome disappeared in all of these patients. You can see that the low carbohydrate diet did the best, but when they start going back on carbs, some of them recurred. But this was fantastic results that you're able to maintain this even later on on a regular diet. So there is something happening. Now, these are small studies. So I'm showing you a meta-analysis. Does this work in larger groups of patients? So this is comparing now. It's low carbohydrate versus a low fat diet. And the low carbohydrate group, you can see over here, their carbs were down to 60 grams. So it's a little bit higher than the ketogenesis. Again, what you see over here, the baseline is similar, and the patients did very well in terms of reducing their weight, in terms of reducing even their cholesterol levels. Let me just go here. And the dietary intervention, again, is clearly shown over here. So here, let me show you the weight, the primary outcome. In all of these studies included in the meta-analysis, majority of the study favored a low carbohydrate versus a low-fat diet. So fat is not the enemy when used in the right way. And again, showing you a breakdown wherein we can just go to the next slide. It's easier to see it over here. In a diabetic population also. So now we are moving from pre-diabetes, overweight, to obesity, metabolic syndrome, to diabetes. What happens if you start using the VLC diet or the very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet in diabetic patients? Small group, 21 patients. Reduction in HbA1c in all of this. Before intervention, 7.4%, and after intervention, 6.3%, with almost a 50% reduction in the medications they were using. Okay. So moving along, another longer-term study. So what I showed you previously were smaller studies, shorter studies. Now let's look at a 12-month outcome study. Randomized trial of moderate carbohydrate 
and using very low carbohydrate diet in patients with type 2 or pre-diabetes. Again, as you can see, moderate carbohydrate also does well, but the very low carbohydrate diets had a very good HbA1c reduction, and this is over the course of six months, which was then maintained at the end of the study by 12 months. Looking at another group of patients, the VOTA results, Dr. Saslau's results, almost akin to a 50 to 40 percent remission, partial remission of type 2 diabetes, which means you are able to bring the HbA1c down below 6.5 percent with about a 50 percent reduction in medications. So putting all this together, these, this is a systematic review again just recently out in press, and you can see there are various studies looking at HbA1c, markers of insulin sensitivity and production, such as the HOMA indices, waist circumference, other metabolic parameters, such as LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and all of this have shown an efficacious and safe nature of the ketogenic diet, which is purported as a very high-fat diet. In fact, this has forced our guidelines to change. The American Diabetes Association in 2019 said, the patients with type 2 diabetes who are not meeting glycemic targets, it is a priority that you can use a low or a very car low carbohydrate diet plan as a viable approach. So this is something that is being recommended. So going back to the fact, why does it work? Of course, we all know it's calories in versus calories out. So I'm not saying that you can have unlimited amount of calories, because remember, a gram of fat is nine calories versus a gram of carbohydrate or protein, which is about four to four and a half calories. So you have to bear that in mind that when you're using fat as your primary source, you don't, you have to count the calories also based on your patient's needs. But what we are truly doing over here is we are flipping a metabolic switch. We are using the whole concept that giving less amount of calories from outside is forcing your body to use the remaining calories as fat. And we also need to think, though, what happens when I see a patient with type 2 diabetes? He comes to me today, and within a week, I'm able to reduce 50% of his medications on the ketogenic diet. Has weight loss happened yet in one week? No, not really. How many of us have tried to lose the five kgs in one week when we have to go for a wedding or something? Raise your hands. I think most of us. So yeah. So if the weight loss has not yet happened, but we still see the improvement in diabetes. This should make us think that what is it? Is it the calorie restriction? No. Is it the weight loss? No, maybe. Is it the fuel switching or are we triggering some other important pathogenic mechanism? And that's what we'll look at in the next few slides. We know that low-carbohydrate diets help to improve glycemic control in type 2 diabetes beyond the weight loss benefits. So this is from a particular study wherein they show that in spite of the person change in body weight not being that high, you can see the HbA1c reduction is much higher in low-carbohydrate diet versus the low-fat diet plus orally statin. So these are significant things to keep in mind. What we now know from various study is that the fat factor, the ketogenic factor, triggers the growth of healthy gut bacteria. This gut probacteria, we know that the probiotics that we use, the microbiota, has a huge impact on our metabolic structure. Now, other metabolic pathways, so try to kind of follow along with me, what the ketone diet does. The ketone diet is always considered a moderate protein. We don't give any protein supplements from outside, because all our walnuts, seeds, oils, they all have high amount of protein. They seem to trigger the thymic effect of proteins and satiety hormones. This improves your energy expenditure. The ketone bodies by themselves can cause a direct suppression of appetite and inhibition of NF-kappa-B, activation of the GRP pathways, inhibition of NLRP3, and histone as first or the very active stage. They give the patients only 800 kilocalories per day, so there is a lot of meal replacers, and this goes on for about three weeks. Followed by this, they start now put them in a low-calorie, low-carbohydrate stage, and they try to maintain their target weight, which they have lost already. And in the maintenance stage, they teach them again, and they give them a balanced diet, and this is what they call their phase-out or phase-seven process. And during this, you need to be monitoring them every weekly or bi-weekly if they are diabetic with anthropometric parameters as well as certain lab assessments done at the beginning and at the end of the study. We use urinary keto sticks for our patients. This is what we do in my clinic. 
We actually, when come, they come in, we assess if they are eating about 300 grams of carbs a day, we ease them in. We start with a moderate carbohydrate or a 150 grams of carbohydrate, low carb diet with a low fat, and we keep them isocaloric. After the first week or two weeks, we then take them into a ketogenic diet, wherein we bring the carbs less than 50 grams per day and not 30 grams. In our patients, we have been able to produce ketosis with 50 grams because they were already taking so much more. And then we take them back into a low carbohydrate and try to see if we can maintain them. And we repeat. That's why our intervention is called the 12-week cyclical ketogenic diet. So this is our cyclical ketogenic diet protocol is what we are following. And this is from my study. I'm just showing you some data of 22 patients. So you can see that significantly we had great weight reductions from baseline to three months, great impact on the BMI, also, fasting sugar and HbA1c both dropped down significantly. We were able to take the patients off their medications and maintain this. So putting it all together, type 1 diabetes, please don't attempt it. Carbohydrate counting is the way to go. Most, we do not have good dietary research. What's new from 2013, the guidelines recognizing very low carbohydrate diet as a safe, viable, and important option for your patients with diabetes targeting for 5% or more than 10 to 15% weight loss for trying to reduce the medications and complications of diabetes. Takeaway messages, I just want to focus on the last sentence that I have put. You may start off with a very low carbohydrate diet, but remember the term therapeutic carbohydrate restriction, TCR. In the future, you are going to see more and more papers on this thinking about 100 to 130 grams of carbohydrates per day for your patient, which is more sustainable, and I'm hoping we will have more and more data showing the benefits. So are you ready to make this switch? If you are, then please take the leap of faith and uh, also promote it to your patients, using not just medicines, but your kitchen as a source for your patients to get better and improve their health. Thank you very much.